the company of curlews. Chapter 13 Bread and Cheese Let me buy you a drink, says John Blackbird. Half a stout and a whisky, is it? That's very kind of you, I reply. Bambi toasts me. Your health, Mr Francis. Jack is my name, good boy. I'm not your teacher, and I'm not the police either. <laughs> yeah, da, I say. And as we are sitting there putting the world to right into the pub, bursts my daughter Eva. Fuming she is. I've been phoning you all day. Where have you been? I bought you a mobile. You know it's got a tracker on it. I thought you were in bed all day. I call round and you're not there. I was so worried. Jeepers. I couldn't get a word in. A what, I say? Have you been fishing, she goes on. No, not in your condition, or Dada, you're drinking again. You had too much last night. And still the tirade goes on. I know it's only because she cares so much. Why are you in Grandpa Owen's clothes, she says. You've been out fishing. Oh, I can't believe it. Sit down, Cariad, I tell her. Look, I'm okay, so don't fret so much. I've been fishing. I've had a wonderful time. I've had a chat in a coach with your mother. Uncle Di was on the river with me and Dada Owen was there watching over us. We've been sorting things out. She starts to cry and I take her in my arms. No, 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 no. No need for tears now. I want you to go home, I say, and I'll be back as soon as. I'm just going down the river to see someone. Promise, she says. Promise you'll come home. I promise I will be home for my tea. Half a word, that's all. I fancy some bread and cheese, I do. No more, mind. Just bread and cheese. I don't want to, but I leave my drink and slowly wander down to the river bank. It's a cold, brisk evening. I button my coat up, wrap my scarf around my mouth to stop the cold air hitting my lungs. The river is mid-tide on the way out. The mud banks with their coffee-coloured silt are fade into black shadows as the winter sun low in the sky sets for the last day of another year. I spot two gossanders fishing for their supper close to the far bank of the river. Buggers they are. They spring out of the water, arch in their backs, their bodies become streamlined and they dive. Twenty seconds or so. Then up they come fifty yards further on. Diving again they go. Reminds me of a big conger. <sighs> I hate congas. Further down the river, two mallard floating quietly looking for food as well. Head down in the water, ass up to the sky. A bit of grass perhaps, or perhaps an insect. Ooh, something flies past me. A bat! Ooh, I hate bats! No! It's the tiniest wren. Gutsy little thing. Beating its wings flying past me. Sitting on a bulrush now down by the river. So light he is. He's hanging on at 45 degrees with his cocky little tail. <laughs> He's watching me. You're all right, fella, I say. I won't harm you. And he flies off up river, swooping in an undulating graph like up and down movement. I slowly pace the towpath down towards the white bridge, unbeknown to the town. 
Hidden away in the shadows of the river bank, I see a ghostly figure come out of the murkiness. Shumai, I say. His head comes up. He's got a sweet smile. Hello, he says. How are you? Nice to see you again. You take care now. He walks on. Not far behind him is Uncle Dai. Donkey jacket and flat cap, a scarf to keep his chest warm. Without a care in the world. He's coughing. We hug each other warmly and sit on the grassy bank. Who was that? Do I know him? As if I'm thumbing a lift. Di turns to me and smiles. Don't you remember Dick? Dick Salmon, he says. Aye, he drowned all right. Dada found him. The river can wash the soul. I always knew he was a good man. There's a silence. I take in what he is saying. Thanks for last night, I say. We sit there, mesmerised by the river meandering through town. Not too cold for you, is it, I ask? No horses tonight, day? No, he says, they don't bother me no more. The street lights are warming up. The party animals are coming off the train and walking into town. I didn't want to know you after you shot that seal, says Di. That was cruel, unfair. I know, I said. The memory of the shooting reminded me of my grandfather. I miss Dada, I say. Yeah, me too, says Di. You look just like him today. <laughs> he pauses. That night, you let your anger take over. Self-control is a wonderful thing. I'm sorry, I say. Do you remember that day in the Eagle when you glassed Ralph? It was an accident, I know. But you lost it. You should have realised that he was an ignorant man or ignorant boy who didn't know any better. You're right, I say. Listen, we all make mistakes, but your biggest mistake was to let Branwen slip through your fingers. We were both wanting to fish, but you, you were manic. There's a balance in life that we all seek. But you tipped the other way and you lost her. I loved her, die. It hurt, I say. There's a silence between us again. Dai says, What you did last night on the river, I was so proud of you. Dada would have been as well. And more important, you must be proud of what you did. Let me tell you, Jack, I have seen the future. It ain't rosy. We need balance in this world. I feel a cold shiver through me and stand up ready to go home to Eva. I look across my river, and there on the other side is a young boy skimming stones. He looks up and calls over. What's he doing out at this time of night, I say? Should be home with his mother. He better be careful on that bank. I can't quite make out who it is, and I can't quite hear what he's saying. Old age. Don't worry about him, says Di, and then shouts to the boy. See if you can hit the bank with an next skim You can do it. I can see the boy searching in his trouser pocket. Takes out the stone. He bends over low, close to the water. He aims, swings back, 
and then quickly forward, letting it go to launch a spinning stone across the river, I find myself counting the bounces the stone makes as it skims along the skin of the water. Three, four, five. It glances up and down. I see it in slow motion crossing the noble river. Each skip sends ripples radiating out into the flow. Some ripples keep going, some fade fast. The stone doesn't sink, it keeps going. Eight, nine, ten. The stone lands by my feet and it is the most perfect of stones. I pick it up. Turn to show my uncle die, but he's gone. I raise the stone to my lips, kiss it for luck, and put it deep into my trouser pocket. I stand and stare at the eddies in the river. Mm -hmm.